After 43 years behind bars, 62-year-old Kevin Strickland is talking to us about his efforts to start a new life as a free man. Strickland was sent to prison in 1979 for a crime he did not commit. Last week, a Missouri judge ordered his immediate release, citing clear and convincing evidence that Strickland was wrongfully convicted. Aaron Moriarty sat down with Strickland for his first in-person television interview since his release, but she has reported extensively on his story, and she's here with us now. Aaron, good morning. Good morning. So, Strickland left prison with very little. The state won't provide him any financial assistance and even took away his wheelchair, really. In the last few days, family and friends and thousands of strangers have rallied around him as he tries to start a life he never got to live. He's here! What did that feel like on Tuesday? November 23rd, going out for the last time. Uh, the day that I walked out, you mean rolled out? Man, I'm finna enter into a space age I know nothing about. It's been a whirlwind of a week for Kevin Strickland, who once feared he'd die in prison. The 62-year-old joined the mayor at Kansas City's Christmas tree lighting ceremony, received more than a million dollars in donations to a trust fund set up by the Midwest Innocence Project, and shaved off the beard he'd promised to remove as a free man. Done deal. Done deal. But after 43 years behind bars, some things are harder to leave behind. I'm still referring to my beard as a bunk as my room as a cell, sleeping light, you know, paranoid, always on alert, suspicious of everything. Yeah, I'm still there. I haven't shook that off yet. And somebody shook my hand. I thought, what do you want? So the world has changed a great deal since you went in. Is this the same planet? I mean, yes, it, yeah. I'm still trying to figure out how to open my telephone. What do you mean? I don't know how to turn it on. They're trying to move me all the emojis and I'm trying to say hello. Strickland was sent to prison in 1979 after being wrongfully convicted of a triple homicide by an all-white jury. In May of 2021, the local prosecutor, Jean Peters Baker, declared Strickland factually innocent, but had to fight the state attorney general in court to secure Strickland's release. Did you ever expect that it would be this long and this hard? No, nope. It was surprising discouraging, disheartening. They wanted him to stay right where he was. But during a three-day hearing, Missouri Judge James Welsh did look at the evidence and ruled that the court's confidence in Strickland's conviction is so undermined that it cannot stand. Six months after Peters Baker's press conference, Strickland was finally on his way home. How did you hear you were getting out of prison? Oh. I, you know, I, I watch uh, soaps in the daytime, one particular. I could hear other inmates banging on their door and beating on the wall, hollering my name. And I went up to the door and they said, man, you're getting out, you're getting out, you're getting out. If you had cut a deal, you would have been out 20 years ago at least. Well, it may be 30. No, that would have required me to lie. Admitting to a crime that I didn't do, no, I just didn't have that kind of lie in me. No regrets? No. I'm sitting here today and I didn't do it. I still got a few years in me and I, I'm just going to try to make the best of them the rest of the way. Strickland is now focused on starting a life he says he never got to live, including reconnecting with his daughter, who was just seven weeks old when he was arrested. Have you talked to her since you got out? <laughs> yes, I'm going to go with the short answer, yes. And does she want to see you? Yes, yeah, she, yeah, she's, uh, she's adamant about it, yes. She's gonna give me a whole week. Seriously? She's gonna give me a whole week. Yeah, so we might not sleep. So I'm, I'm making an itinerary now. We, we're, we're doing everything I can think of. Do you feel like uh, you've gotten a second chance? You gotta fill it up to make up for everything you've lost. Yes, and they, they try to tell me one step at a time, slow down, but they didn't miss 43. I did, so I gotta go. Oh. The Missouri Attorney General's office said that it was defending the rule of law, but that the court has spoken and it will not pursue further action. 
Strickland says that he wants to get involved in the legislative process, one, to help other inmates prove their innocence, and also to guarantee financial compensation for future exonerees, something he's not getting. Such a heartbreaking story. What, why is he in a wheelchair, Aaron? Um, he suffers from spinal stenosis that went pretty much untreated in prison, yeah. um, which is like the narrowing, I think it was, I'm not a doctor, spinal cord. So he's hoping that now some of that money that he can, you know, get some kind of help, some so kind of treatment. So he can walk again, That's possibly? Big, that's what, he can stand, but just not for long periods of time. And he does want to be able to just walk and get rid of the and, wheelchair. And close to $2 million may sound like a lot of money, but when you look at all that he needs yeah. and all that he's lost, it doesn't seem like very much he's to me compared to what he needs. starting from the beginning. I mean, he yes. had to buy clothes. He had no clothes to fit him. Shoes. He's very proud. He bought $10 shoes. Um, a <laughs> basic ID. Driver's yeah. license. I mean, he has nothing. Yeah. Although a lot of people are, are touched. I mean, thousands of people, yeah. strangers, are helping him out. Yeah. I'm glad he gets to see his daughter and his grandbabies. I guess, Making too. up for lost time. I know, and they're grown, yeah. though. I mean, they're in their yeah. 20s. Thank you so much.